the Range Rover, the epitome of the upper class county set and as stylish a cross country machine as you could ever wish to buy. Yes, you can get a Mercedes M Class that's £20,000 cheaper and will get you to 60 faster. But, well, but it's just not British. Nor, of course, technically is the Range Rover, since Ford bagged this prestige slice of the Rover Empire when BMW flogged it off. But we'll forget that for the moment. This is the top of the range Vogue model. And you're sitting in upper class from the word go, with your classic command driving position. You're surrounded by leather and wood, or at least something that looks like wood. There are buttons all over the steering wheel, buttons all over the dash, sat nav, aircon, it's luxury all the way. But there is one drawback with the Range Rover, and it's not just that 50 grand price tag. It doesn't like going round corners. It's not that it doesn't grip reasonably well, it just, well, rolls a lot. But help is at hand. Overfinch is a company that's been modifying Range Rovers for over 25 years. And for £2,103, they'll tweak your suspension to greatly reduce that roll. Or for about £9,000, they'll get rid of it completely. Well, almost. Overfinch call this their ART, Active Ride Technology. And look, no springs. In fact, no dampers or anti-roll bars either. So let's see if it works. At a steady 45 miles an hour in an emergency avoidance simulation, it's clear that the Overfinch stays smooth while the Range Rover begins to flounder. And at 50, it's even clearer, with the standard model unable to complete the course without having to slow down. Overfinch have engaged a design team with previous experience on Lotus Grand Prix cars during the 80s, when these hydro-pneumatic systems were all the rage, and in so doing, they appear to have defied the laws of physics. But does the loss of body roll ruin its road manners? Well, yes and no. With less roll, the Overfinch is far more comfortable to drive around twisting lanes and urban jungles. But when it comes to hitting potholes, whilst the standard car wobbles through it like a nice soft jelly, the Overfinch sends shockwaves jarring through the cabin. But given the choice, I'd rather be safer on motorways than more comfortable on mud tracks. Doubtless the off-roading capabilities of the Range Rover have been slightly compromised. But then, come on, who's going to do any serious off-roading in a limo like this? So the suspension works, but Overfinch haven't stopped there. For starters, they've sorted out that little problem with the Mercedes by ripping out the 4.6-litre Rover V8 and sticking in a 6.3-litre Chevy V8. That'll be another £19,851, please, sir. And they've made a few changes on the inside as well. Got your checkbook ready? If your calculators failed to keep pace, Overfinch will save you the trouble by offering you this special limited edition silver anniversary model with all those options on it and a few more besides for a cool £85,000. Whilst the 400 horsepower the Chevy produces sounds impressive, you have to remember it's got two tonnes to push round. And it really doesn't feel like it can reach 60 in the 6.6 .6 seconds that they say it can. The brakes, on the other hand, are really impressive. It's got a nice solid pedal, which means you do need a fair bit of muscle to make them work. But 
hit them hard and from 70 miles an hour they'll stop you a full two car lengths shorter. And as for all the interior tweaks, well, I'm afraid it's all far too fussy for me. In fact, I actually prefer the standard model. Of course, you don't have to start with a new Range Rover. All these modifications can be done on any model up to seven years old. Overall, it has to be said, the overfinch is a bit over the top. But if I was a Range Rover owner, I'd certainly look to be reducing some of that roll and I'd have those extra brakes. But as for the extra power, I think I'd rather spend the money on a Lotus Elise. Next week on Top Gear, Ford Badge Land Rover looks the new Maverick. Gassing up our guide to the strange new world of LPG. And the Top Gear auction report. What am I bid?